sorry for the delay. Am I am I audible? Yeah, definitely yes, you are. You are audible okay. to me. So we will start over. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, sure. So uh, we will start it over with Material Master, which is a part of uh, Master Data. Okay, so. I would want you to also make certain, uh, I mean, uh, you're recording this call, right? Yeah, I'm recording this. Well then, that shouldn't be a problem at all. So you need not write down anything as such. So I'll start it over with Material Master. And uh, as we talk about the Material Master, so the very first thing will be creation of a Material Master. Okay? So how do we create a Material Master will be the first question. So it's very simple. It's very simple in uh, SAP. So the T code that is used for uh, creating a material master is slash n. So, so forget about the slash n. It's mm01. Okay. When you click on mm01, there are two options to create a material. Okay. One is options in the sense whether you want a number range according to your vision requirement, as simple as whether you want that to be keyed in manually, like uh, according to you, like say for example, TE. 1 or 10 or whatever it could be, which is an external number range, or do you want the system to propose you a number? It depends. It can be created in two ways. I'll be showing both the ways. I think somebody is uh, waiting for you to open the door. Yeah, just a Yeah, sure, please. Let me know once you are back. You're back, right? Hello. Yeah, you're back? Yeah, I'm back. Just give me one minute. I'll turn off my TV as well. Okay. Well, <coughs> okay. So as I already said, material if you master. Don't mind, uh, can I, uh, if you don't mind, uh, shall I, can I put uh, uh, put it in mute for another two three two to three minutes because of my background. I mean, you, you want to easy. you want to go on mute, right? Yeah. Yeah, please go ahead, no problem. But uh, I hope you will be there at all. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah okay, in three I'll, minutes I'll be back. Don't worry, I'll be. There. Okay, so shall I proceed further or you want me to wait for the next three minutes? No, 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 you can proceed. I am listening. Okay, so in order to create a material master, the main SAP screen will look like this. It's first thing. So the T code used to create a material master is MM01. Okay, so uh, when we go to the MM01, this is a screen, it, how it's going to be looking like. So we have two options to create a material whether you want that to be via external number ranges or through internal number ranges. Okay. Uh, internal or external number ranges. So external number ranges is as simple as you know, I can key in something according to my vision will. Say for example, SK654 is my material. Okay. So when I click on this, it goes inside and it's going to ask me which are the views that I will have to be selecting across in order to proceed further with my material creation. So when it comes to material master or material management, we mainly focus on three different views. One is the basic data. The second one is the purchasing one. When we scroll down, it will be the accounting one. Okay. I have selected all these three views and I have clicked on default values so that uh, I need not do it again and again. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a doubt. Is all these views mandatory or if some fields of views are not entered, uh, how, how does you. this combination work actually? I I'll, you. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. When it comes to procurement, we mainly focus on purchasing, right? Likewise, 
there will be somebody called as PP team, which is production planning team. This views will be held responsible by them. Okay, all the inputs that will be keyed in by in this particular views will be held responsible or accountable by production planning team. Likewise, sales team (SD) sales and distribution, right? So these three uh, views, what are the inputs that we key in over here? Will be the inputs that will be provided to us by sales team. Okay. You got it right. Yeah. Say for example, it. say for example, if so I click on the, the yeah. Uh -huh. If I select this and if I key uh, go inside, it, it's going to ask me for the information pertaining to sales also. Okay, but this information will not be available with me right away. Okay, that information will be provided to me by sales team. So if that is the case, then I'll key in the information which is available and which will be pertaining to the sales team that is how it is okay. however when it comes to material management the main things or the main views that will be falling into our bracket is basic data 1 or the basic data 2 basic data it simply means that it will be a combination of both basic data 1 and basic data 2 okay and the next one is the purchasing one wherein we key in all the details pertaining to procurement alone here and then comes the accounting view okay these are the three main views okay which we'll be focusing upon and certain times to a certain extent we do make use of this purchase order text also okay apart from this views we need not be too so, much concerned uh, about mm -hmm. uh, the fields such as classifications and all those are not mandatory if you want no, you can no. enter or yes. uh, absolutely absolutely definitely yes it's not mandatory at all no views are mandatory actually speaking okay it's just that it's pertaining to the particular and concern module it it, it it plays a role or there so just because it falls into mm module we take care of all these views and if sales team is creating a master data they will have to select all these things and they will be removing our data okay as simple as but this. it depends also on the material type material type right for example if you are purchasing a raw material there should be a purchase data for that it depends on the material type or uh, mm -hmm. plan-wise mandatory there will be uh, such fields which you have to select before you are going on. No, nothing like that, nothing like that, <coughs> nothing like that. It, it's uh, purely independent on the material type, okay, but but it's dependent on material type to a certain extent. I'll show you how it is dependent and why it is dependent on the, all those things, okay. And uh, I think okay. you'll need to okay. wait for the closure of this uh, session wherein I'll be talking about the back-end settings also okay so then you will get to know about why okay. what and all okay that will be uh, I mean easier for you too yeah okay and in case even though if you have any questions at that point of time yes we'll definitely talk about it and we'll get it sorted out okay sure, so sure, now sure. for MM point of view basic data purchasing to a certain extent purchase order text and accounting view. These are the four main views which will be mainly concerned upon and I have defaulted all these things to uh, so that I will not select each and every time. Okay. Just in case if I uh, don't default all these values, I will have to come to the screen every time and I will have to keep on selecting all these things. So I will just defaulted it across yeah, and I will on enter. Yeah. Yeah, I'll press on enter. It's going to ask me for the plant code. So Generally, while for training purpose and uh, IDS, which is a German made one SAP, they have provided with all sorts of access and they have configured it across in such a way that this can be used for training purpose only. So we'll go with that itself. Okay. So the plan code is thousand. I'll go with that. Okay. And now the material description. So whatever it could be, test or one or whatever it could be. I mean, whatever the, uh, you feel like, you can go ahead and key in a crash. But this is for testing, that's the reason why I'm keying it in this way. When it goes to industry, what happens is, say for example, if I'm procuring a pen, which is color, which is colored as green, green colored, so it will be named according to their standards. G, P, 1, something like that. Yeah. Green pen 1. So according to their vision will it will be, and uh, mainly it's purely dependent on the business requirement. Okay? So the base unit of measure, whether you want that to be in pieces or each, or how it should be and all those things. Zero material group, I'm just keying in some code. Material group is one thing wherein, say for example, it's a group of materials. Ideally and uh, simple, in, in simple words, group of materials. So what this group of materials mean is electronic items. All the electronic items will fall and make one group. 
Likewise as furnitures, okay? Likewise as cosmetics. All these things will be falling into different different groups. So each and every group of materials will have a different code. So so that thing will be keyed across in the material group. Okay. Then click on enter. It takes you to the purchasing view. Okay. In this purchasing view, what happens is, see this base unit of measure which we keyed in in the basic uh, basic data one. It keeps carried forward, carrying forward, even until the end of this uh, this thing. I mean, uh, until the accounting view. Okay. Until unless you save it across, it still keeps carrying forward across to each and every view. Okay. So likewise, we need to key in certain mandatory fields. See, whenever you find this kind of an box okay it simply means that this field is mandatory okay this is mandatory so we need to key in a value there so i'll make use of some value over here bl you can make use of the same thing okay until and unless you get to know how to create a new one you can make use of this for for, for time being okay purchase value key i'll key it key it as one i will there is one topic Maren. you just give me a minute yeah yeah okay Hello. Hello. I'm so sorry. I was on mute and I was talking. I'm so sorry about it. Okay. No, I just keyed in the. I've keyed in the purchase value key as one. You make a note of this particular thing, wherein we'll be talking about it in depth about this purchase value key and the shipping instructions again in a future classes. Okay, this will be covered upon again in a different topic altogether. Okay, if I say and if uh, I talk about this uh, particular thing, right? Yeah, just yeah, have one more question on the, on the material. For example, uh, before implementing, the industry will follow a set of material number for their own legacy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so once uh, a, a SAP project is implemented into a new project, new play, a new plan, so. Is there any opportunity that they can key in their same material number into SAP or SAP will have a different set of series of part number we want to, uh, on which we want to configure ourselves? It purely depends upon the business. If they want that numbers to be retained across in the same way, yes, there is an option. If they don't want that to be carried forward and they want a different kind of a series altogether, even that is possible. And we need not create each and every material individually. I think you are aware about it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the reason why I asked because I come to know that. Uh, it's it's definitely possible. Make the... Okay, okay. Okay. It's definitely possible to have the number ranges according to the old number ranges in the organization, according to the legacy system, or if they want that to be changed across based on the new configurations and the new demands, even that is still possible. That shouldn't be a problem at all. And I'll teach you about how. Uh, what is that? Uh, materials will be configured across and uploaded across to the system when we talk about the project. Okay, on how the when will the data integration? I mean, data migration takes place and at what phase it is, and uh, who are all the people who will be doing it across and how it's going to happen. That shouldn't be a problem at all. That will be covered upon in during the project uh, uh, stage. I mean, in which stage of the project it will be, and I'll, I'll be covering it across. Don't worry about it. Okay, okay. so. For <coughs> So for now, the purchase value key, I just key in it as one and click on enter. It goes to the next view, which is purchase order text. Just key in something, okay? 
whichever you feel like. I don't, I mean, there is no uh, nothing like a uh, uh, hard and fast rule for now. But logically and usually in the business, what they do is whatever that cannot be keyed in across here in the description. Okay, if there are some specifications pertaining to this particular material, say for example, I want this material to be packed upon in a box. Pack the material in a box. Okay, I want this material to be packed in a box. So I'll have to be sending this information to to the vendor. Correct, right? So the vendor will get to know about it by looking into this comments. So again, the question: This information doesn't stay only in the material master. It keeps flowing to purchase orders too. How and when it will be flowing across? I'll be showing it across. Don't worry about it. Okay, for now, okay. yes. You can key in some data over here, and then comes to the accounting view. When it comes to the accounting view, we have something called as validation class. Key in as 3000 for now, and why, what, and where will be linked across? I'll be talking about in depth when it comes to account determination part. Okay. okay. And then uh, the price control. Usually for a raw material, it's variable price. When it's a uh, semi-finished product. It could be variable price or a standard fixed price. When it's a finished product, it's definitely a standard price, which is yes. So we are making use of the material type as a raw material. So we'll go with us, price control B, and we'll key in some price. Okay. And finally, click on enter, and we have the material number SK654 ready. Okay. SK654 is a material which is already created a crush. Okay. So likewise, I need to create a material 654 but I want the internal number in this to pick up on okay so, as simple as system will propose a number range okay it's not that I'll be doing something so I'll copy the material SK654 but all the details will be captured across but it's just that the number will be a different one so what's the number of the mat particular material it's 1632 it's already coming up okay the reason why it's coming up I'll be talking about the same thing in the later on class of today itself Okay, and then I copied a material and then I'll go further and I click on save. So material 1632 is created as crash. Okay, MM01 is a T code which we used in order to proceed further and create a material. Likewise, we have a few other T codes which is very important slash in MM02 wherein we change a material. Say for example, I want to change this particular material. I keyed in this material. Okay, I keyed in this material and I made some changes sorry I, I created a material and I am supposed to be creating it in a different way or I am supposed to change some details pertaining to this material okay so at this point of time I can go ahead and create the same using the T code sorry change the details using the T code mm02 when you go to mm02 again this views will be not selected across it's just that I have selected it and defaulted it across it's coming in this way okay so again, it's going to ask to which plant this belongs to, and uh, we created a material with. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Hello. Okay. Uh, see, we created this particular sorry, material. With yeah. No problem. No problem. Okay. So uh, we created this particular material with the plant code uh, thousand. 
So I'll just do one thing. I'll just key in the plan code as 1,100. Let's see what's going to happen. See there below, it says material 1632 does not exist in the plan 1,100, which means this material was created only with the plan code 1,000. So I want to make some changes. I wanted to change the description of this particular material. Okay, so I changed it across. And then, I mean, it's it's not that we'll need to be changing only one particular field or something, okay? You can go ahead and make as many changes as you want to any and every field which is eligible to, okay? So you change the material using the decode MM02. I'll show you again, just in case if uh, you were not clear about it. So basic unit of measure, the last time I made use of PC. Now I'm gonna make use of each. And material group, I made use of something. I don't know whether this metal group is there or not. Whenever you need, I mean, the, when there are some options across or something like that, you will find it by clicking on the F4 button. If you click on F4, you will it will lead to a screen wherein it's going to show us which are the ones which are available, which are the materials, uh, I mean, uh, uh, whatever the values that are available for that particular field. In this case, it's material group. So there were many other values. Likewise, see, there are many other values over here. So I just selected on one particular material group, and then I uh, clicked on Enter to move on to the next screen. It's going to take some time. Okay, so likewise, I change the purchasing group to, okay, I, no, it doesn't exist. So, see, this is the one which I was taking, talking about, okay, you, either you click on F4 or you click on this box, you will get the options that are available for that particular field, okay, and then I click uh, on enter. So this is pre predefined or after one, so you create it, then the record will form. Once you create this, it across, uh, it will be coming into picture. Okay. I mean, I'll show you how to create it as well and how to make use of the same thing. Okay. I'll show you about that same thing today in today's class itself. Okay. I'll click on save. Once this is saved across, you need to, I mean, in case if you want to view a material in display mode, how will you do it? MM03. MM03 is a T code. You just need to click on the same, uh, uh, I mean, uh, click on the material whichever you want to uh, uh, check on and then select all the views wherein you want to view. Say for example, I just need to view the basic data, okay? I don't want to view these two views. Then you can just select one and click on enter. It will lead to only that particular view. Even though if you click on enter, it doesn't take you to the other view. However, you can go and select over here, okay? If you go and select, you can view these views. Getting right? Yeah. Okay, and click on okay, fine. So this is MM03, okay? Likewise, there's another T code called MM04. What happens is this, say for example, I created a material or you created a material, okay? Either of us don't like each other. You hate me a lot, I hate you a lot. So what happens? I manipulate the data, okay? So how do I identify? I mean, when there is an audit happening and your manager is coming and asking you, why did you do this, okay? So you don't have a proof saying that you don't do, I mean, you didn't do it, right? So, but in, in SAP, each and every field will get recorded across, and if you want to find what are the changes done, who has done the changes, everything can be captured across and identified across in the T-code MM04. And this is pertaining to only a material master again, okay? Other ones will have different uh, T-codes again. So, 1632, there was, was, there, was this material uh, changed across? Who changed it across? 
when was it changed across each and every detail can be captured across in this report and we will be showing it across over here okay this was a time the material got created across this was the first change it underwent what was the change it underwent there was a change in the description material description got changed across what was the language English okay and it was earlier test one now it got changed across to testing who changed it SAP user what time it is here okay likewise if we go to the last one or the first entry you see a lot of things over here we change the material group we change the base unit of measure we change the purchasing group everything got changed across over here okay so we I mean it's more like you know nothing can be uh, done in the background without getting into notice of others so each and everything will be captured across so the T code for the same is MM04 MM04 and I'll show it again if you want to see any changes pertaining I mean done to a particular material you can go ahead and view it across in the T code MM04 again who changed it across this is a username in the reason why it's coming as a SAP user is I, I mean I'm, I'm logged into the system as a SAP user say for example if you log into your system with a different name it comes as that name okay if Satish has changed so it, it, it is a corporate, uh, so if, if it is a corporate they will be having an ID so based on that ID you can just... definitely yes absolutely okay so this is a T code and this, this is the usage of this and likewise we have something called as slash and mm50 so what does MM50 do is very simple say for example you created a material okay with plant code 1000 okay you created a material with the plant code 1000 so you want that material to be extended across to another plant 1100 so okay you need to key in certain other details as well I'll select the material okay see this is a material that is created across 1632 with the plant code 1000 so what you want to change in this what details are the are the ones that you're looking out to change across there is something called as maintenance status go to maintenance status okay you can go ahead and extend it across to anything and other fields also say for example we created across accounting view purchasing view what is the basic data this is the basic data KEB these are the three views wherein we maintain across. Say for example, I want to go ahead and maintain it for MRP. Okay, I'll, I'll click on enter and I'll click on execute. So click on this maintain materials. Now what happens? It will take me to a screen for MRP view directly. You see this right? MRP view. Okay. MRP type. MRP controller triple zero. I'm I'm just uh, keying in some uh, details. That's all. This details usually will be provided to us by uh, the production planning team. We need not be doing anything on this, actually speaking. Okay, that's it. So we have maintained the MRP views for this particular materials also. MM50. What happens is as simple as when some changes I mean uh, you create a material but you want that to be extended across extended across to some other views at this point of time you can go ahead and make use of this particular T code likewise I mean we can we had I mean uh, in this particular example we had maintained this material for accounting view purchasing view and with basic data view so now what we did is we extended the material for MRP view so we'll just go ahead and cross check in case if that details that we keyed in are reflecting or not okay so if you uh, go to the map mm -hmm. uh, if, if there is a WM view it also is applicable here right uh, for example if we uh, if in the same system WM uh, we are extending it to warehouse management so mm -hmm. uh, for doing the warehouse management it is like uh, is it anything mandatory like uh, MRP has to be created or uh, for example, the basic data of the thing is what you are creating first, basic data, accounting, and uh, uh, what you call that. Okay. Uh, so, Look, purchase okay. data. So, okay. these, three, wait, wait. Three, these three views are, yeah. See, I mean, for the first time when you are creating it across, you are talking about, or while extending it across? While extending it, I am actually. 
while extending, you'll just need to select the material which you want to be extended across. You will come to this maintenance status. Whichever the view that you want to extend across, you can go and extend it across. Okay. In this case, it's warehouse management that I've selected across. Yes, stands for warehouse management. I'll go ahead. There are certain things, but you will need to be keying in across. The reason being, what is that? There are some values which are pertaining to warehouse management, which you should need to be aware about. Say, for example, there are certain things called as picking strategy, put away strategy, and everything when it comes to WM. Okay, and those things, how you want that to be captured across, and what are, where will I mean, who will be providing you the details? It's again the WM guy. Okay, once you have the details, you can go and maintain it across. As simple as that. Okay. Now you 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 did maintain it for warehouse management and even for uh, MRP also. You just need to go and validate in case if the same got maintained across or not. See, the last time, if you go and check it across, not every view was there appearing over here. Yeah. What were the views yeah. for which I had maintained it across? It was coming. Now MRP also is coming. Likewise, WM also is coming. So just go and check in case the, that came up or not. See, wait. I'll go back one screen. Sorry, slash and MM03. I need to show you something else also here. You can look into this, right? In the storage location. Under this plant, 1000, this material is maintained across 2000 plant. To which storage location it belongs to? To which storage, warehouse number and to which storage type it belongs to? If you know this details, you can go ahead and key in across. And for the reporting purpose, it's going to help you out. Okay, so if you click on keep uh, clicking on enter, it takes you to all the views wherein the data is available and for which the material is extended across now. Okay, so th that's how it does. So this is about MM50. Likewise, slash in MM60, wherein you want this particular material to flag it for deletion. Okay, you don't want to make use of this particular material. Just give me one minute. Wow, I'm so sorry. Slash in MM0 letters. I'm so sorry about it. It's a slash in MM06 wherein you flag a material for deletion. Okay, you want you don't want to make use of this particular material anymore. So you will delete it across. This deletion doesn't mean that this material will get wiped off. This material will still be available in SAP and it will be getting archived only at certain point of times every one year or something like that. It depends on uh, the system architecture. Purely depends on the requirement of the organization. So I want this material to be blocked across. I can block a material at particular plant. Say for example, I have created this material for 1000. I want to create uh, and also for 1100. I want this to be blocked only at plant 1000. I want to stop the particular materials procurement at plant thousand so I can go ahead and do even that also or I can go ahead and block the material at the client level which means at the basic data level okay so which means this material cannot be used across at any plant be it the plant thousand or the thousand hundred one okay click on enter and save so this material will be flagged upon for the same thing we have done and also yeah you can go ahead and do it across you can go ahead and do it across. That shouldn't be a problem at all. Say for I'll show you it. But storage location, if it is linked across to warehouse, that will be working across. If not, we'll need to check. Slash in MM01, first thing. I'll need to extend this material for 1632. Okay. One six three two. I'll extend this material first prior to me going across and doing something else. I'll extend this material to plant thousand one hundred. Deletion is deletion flag is set at client level. You see this right? You can see this yeah, message. Okay. The reason why it's coming is because we did this. Okay, I'll go ahead and uh, yeah. yeah, we did this. That's the reason why it's coming in this way. However, I'll go ahead and extend it across anyways. I'll show you what next. Now I click on enter. Entry does not exist in MARC. Okay, well, yeah, that's correct. Click on enter. I'll remove this, okay? I'll click on enter, enter, and save. Okay? I'll go to plant. 
thousand, which means only this plant will be getting blocked. Okay. Likewise, if I go to thousand one hundred, only this particular plant will be getting blocked across. I haven't extended this particular material to any storage locations, so that wouldn't be coming up. You understanding, right? If I would have created this material with respect to uh, this particular storage location, triple zero one or zero zero one or whatever it could be, okay, so that material would have come up and shown saying that it is getting blocked at only the storage location. Okay, so I just blocked the material and I also unblocked it also. And now, if even though even now also, if you can want to go and check it across, you can go to MM04 to just cross check in case if there is block across the not see there is a T code which was used mm06 for this particular material for what was it used to the whole value was X which means it was blocked across and now it is blank which means it's unblocked okay so this is okay. one thing likewise we have something called a slash in mm60 okay you want to pull a report of particular materials okay you don't know what material it is gonna be, but you know some keywords about it. Okay, you know certain things uh, about this particular material, so you can go ahead and key in with the starting numbers. Say for example, the material starts with one six. Okay, you don't know the next numbers. Okay, so you can go ahead and pull it across accordingly with respect to the material number also, or you want to go ahead and pull it across with reference to plant code. You can go ahead and do it across. If you want to go ahead and pull it across with reference to a material group or a material type or whatever it could be, you can still go ahead and extract it across. Give you an example of a material. I'll just key in. This is one six is the starting of the material, and I've keyed in a star over there. So any and every material that's going to start over with one six will come up over here. Mm -hmm. No, there is something wrong with this. Well, wait. Just give me one minute. I'll power on. I'll turn my. Yeah, I'll turn on my charger. I I think there is something which is which uh why it's not coming up. I'm not pretty sure it was supposed to come up because it's gonna start with one six five. Well, one minute. Star one six star if it it's gonna it's it's gonna take a little longer time. The reason is there could be many materials which are gonna be starting with one six and uh, which contains one six in them. Okay, one six one six one six. One six. See, there are many materials lists which is coming up, okay, which is going to start or which contains a one six, okay. Likewise, say for example, I created a material with star T E. Oh my God, T E star F eight. So I've just created only a couple of materials. Uh huh. There are but but there are some materials which are already being created across by someone else. Okay, so even those things are also coming up in this. Okay, so MM60 is to generate a list of materials. Okay, or say for example you want to check the material 1632 itself. You can go ahead and click it across. You can see here. See now this is created with reference to plant 1000. This particular material is again the same material number but it it got extended across to plant 1100. Okay, and plant 1000 also has an MRP type PD, but this doesn't have MRP. Okay, because it's not extended across for MRP for plant 1100. Okay, so this is for the list of materials. Likewise, MMAM. Okay, what does MMAM do is, I haven't procured any material for now, or I don't have any open PRs or POs, 
and I don't have any stock in my warehouse for this particular material to even to issue also. At that point of time, a particular material will be eligible for getting a material type changed. Okay. Say for example, this material was created with what? ROS. See, it got populated automatically. I want this material to be changed across to FERT material type. Okay. I'll go ahead and click on whatever the new material type it is and then I'll go ahead and click on execute. So what happens is in case if there is any procurement happen or some kind of activity that has happened on a particular material, at that point of time, it wouldn't be allowing to change a particular material type. However, when there is no or nothing that has happened on a particular material, at that particular point of time, you can go ahead and change it across. I mean, you can go ahead and change the material type accordingly. See, material type changed successfully. However, please note, the following are required fields due to the new material type, but you have not maintained them in the in at least la, least one segment. That is, you have either not yet maintained these fields or not yet maintained them for certain organizational units. So there, there will be certain views and uh, fields that will be mandatory across in FERT material type, right? So those things, that's the message that it is, it, it is uh, showing across now. Now what we did is, we just changed across the material type from MM0, material type from ROS to ROS to FERT. Yes, that's right. So how do you check it, whether it got changed across and to which material type now it belongs to? You just need to come inside and just click on I. This is the information. It's going to give you the information about what's a material type and everything. See? What's a material type? FERT. It got changed across. Earlier it was what? ROS. You can also validate it using slash in MM04. So if you are changing uh, material type, uh, each material type will be having uh, uh, payment type and all those stuff, right? So everything will be configured. Uh, so on each material type, uh, what are the things which is applicated? You will be taking it going forward or? Uh, See, what happens is material type will be, each and every material type will be having its significances. Okay. So generally what happens is the number ranges, okay. The first impact will be on the number ranges. It should be, I mean, say for example, if ERT is having a number range which starts with uh, 2000, okay. However, ROH, the material type starts with 16. There is a co conflict, right? So at that point of time, it wouldn't allow. Most of the time, it shouldn't be allowing a crash. Okay. Likewise, there are some fields, user departments, like the views that I said, right? FERT might be having a different view set, and uh, likewise, uh, ROS might be having a different view. Okay. So each might, I mean, we'll need to ensure that everything is in uh, sync, and then only we will be able to proceed further and change it across. crash. Okay. okay? Okay. okay. Now I'll minimize the screen. I'll open this Excel. Okay. So now, what happened? Was okay. So I've covered up until this. I need to show you two more things. Wait. Okay. In uh, MM zero two. Okay. Say for example, I, I have, let me make one more thing clear. Okay. Blocking a material is completely different from deleting a material. Okay. Blocking a material can be, you can be blocking a material for a particular thing. Say for example, you want this material to be blocked for procurement or invoicing or completely blocked, something like that. Okay. How will you be doing it as simple? If you are doing it in the basic data, okay, explant material status, you can go to the options and check. Okay, blocks for procurement, free for pilot fees, obsolete materials. There are many other reasons it could be blocked for. Okay, blocked for purchasing. I'll just block it for purchasing at basic data level. What it means is, if I if I block a material at basic data, it simply means that it's going to be blocked at plant level, irrespective of the plant, be it plant thousand or two thousand or one thousand one hundred, whatever it could be. If I block it at this particular level, it's it, it's going to be blocked at the client level, and this material cannot be used across any other plants too. However, I'll delete this. I'll click on enter. When you do the same thing, 
in procure sorry in purchasing view it has a different meaning okay so what is this plant 1000 okay this particular material with plant 1000 is blocked for procurement or at warehousing level which means i'll i'll show you a little i'll, I'll go a little uh, in depth about it and i'll show you about it okay i'll just create a po and i'll uh, want I, I want you to check on uh, or i want you to see how it's going to be over there okay when I go and create a PO, what happens is with the plant 1000, it's going to give me an error. However, when I go and do the same thing with respect to a plant 1100, it will not show any error as such. It's going to say, okay, go ahead and create a PO. You are allowed to do so. That is what it's going to be saying. What happened? It's not coming up. ME21N. Okay, well, it came up, okay? The material number is 1632. Okay, the plant is thousand. Correct, right? Net price is something. Let me give you something. Material group zero zero one. Plant is thousand. One thousand. Okay, click on enter. Let it give errors. That's fine. I'll show you. When you run a complete cycle, whenever I mean, uh, even you do will be making use of this IDES, right? demo system. So what happens is this, until and unless you run across a complete cycle, the system will not be that fast, that great enough. Okay. Yeah, well, now I think it should be up. Yeah, enter a vendor. Okay. One, zero, 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 two, three, three. Well, this wonder is there. I have to see this and everything is set now. See this message now here. Status. Blocked for procurement of warehouse of material 1632 does not allow external procurement for this particular plant. Okay, 1100. You click on 1100. See, material 1632 mainly procured internally. This is a warning message that still should be fine. Click on OK and check message, and you will be able to create a purchase order with respect to this particular material. However, no matter what you do, for plant 1000, until and unless you unblock it across, you will not be able to create it across. Okay? Okay, so for uh, block uh, delivery time, it is on uh, MM06, right? For this one, what is the T code? It's MM02. For Usually what happens is, until and unless you create a material, you will not be getting to know whether you want this material to be blocked across or not. Correct, right? So we will create a material. Everything yeah. is done. For all these days, I was procuring this material. I was paying the material. I mean, paying for this material and everything was fine. All of a sudden, I realized that the, this material is of no use to me. I need to stop procuring this material. Or whenever this material is being procured across, the, it goes to a particular vendor for payment, right? So the vendor was not giving good quality material. I need to stop this material from getting the invoice posted across or from procurement or from goods receipt or whatever it could be. So I'll decide it across and I'll go to MM02 and then I'll just go ahead and get that done. Okay? If I do it in the basic data level, it simply means that it's going to be blocked across both at 1,100 and also at 1,000. For which, which of the plants that's being, uh, the material is being created across for. However, when I do it for uh, at the purchasing level, it simply means that it will be only at that particular plant level. Okay, I 
last time I did that in the purchasing level for plan 1000. Now I'll be doing it at the basic data level. Okay, so that you'll get to or you'll be having a better idea about it. Okay, I'll just click on save. Yeah, it got saved across. Go to create patches order. Now click on OK. It might be OK. That's fine. But slash and ME21N. Why? We had already done certain things over there. Now we will have, we'll have to be changing it, right? We changed after the pivot was created. One double zero, two double three. Click on enter. This is with plan 1000, okay, 1100, this is Berlin plant, again, it's being blocked. However, when I go and check inside this material, it's actually not blocked at the procurement level. Instead, it is blocked at client level. Correct, right? See, this is blocked at client level, and when you go to purchasing level, plan 1000, it's not blocked. So, which means, ideally, it's at the client level, okay? So this is one thing that I'm supposed to be showing. Along with this, I'll need to show you one more thing. Say, for example, I want this material directly to go to quality inspection. Okay, Whenever I get this material, I want this particular material not to directly uh, go and uh, get goods issued across or something. Whenever I procure this material, I want this material to first undergo a quality inspection. How will I do it? Us? It can be done even at the material master level. Okay, so in the purchasing view, if you click on post to inspection stock, this, this checkbox, and click on save, whenever you do a GR, the material will go on it, the quality inspection stock. Sorry? Yeah, I was saying the same thing. Okay. Yeah, it goes to quality inspection, and once it's being released from quality inspection, only at that point of time, the material comes back and falls into our usage stock, which is unrestricted. Okay, this is about the front end of material master. Okay, there is nothing else that you will need to be knowing about the front end usage of material master, and the reason why you will be knowing all those things is certain scenarios wherein uh, I even have encountered it okay, in the beginning stages, there will be a new guy who has joined newly to your organization and you are the support consultant. He doesn't know how to create a material. He is saying, he created, I mean he did something, over here he, he, was, he, was, he was supposed to key in something, okay? So you don't know where is there or not, he's getting an error, right? So he has taken a screenshot and he's going to send it across to you. So what does it mean? It simply means that the material is itself is not created for the plant 1200. You know this, but the end user is not, is not knowing it. Even this kind of tickets also sometimes keep coming up. Okay? So that's a reason why you will need to be knowing about the front end usage of anything and also the back end usage anyways. So this is with the front end. We will step into the back end settings of a material master. The T code for any and every setting, any backend setting will be still SPRO. Okay? SPRO. In case if you uh, are making a note of it or if you are finding it out, the T code will be shown over here. You can see this. You can set it across according to your vision will. If you want that to be shown as a system, the client name or the user or to which program, what the program name is or what's the T code. You can still be shown over here. I set it across to T code so that it will be easier for you to identify as well. Okay. So SPRO, SAP IMG. What IMG means is implementation guide. Okay. SAP implementation guide. This is the only place wherein you can do all sorts of customizations and configurations. Okay. This is the only place. But there are T codes even to these things as well. However, you need not be knowing it. In case if you need to be knowing all those things, that shouldn't be a problem again. Click on additional information, display key, IMG activity. Okay, I'll show it again. Don't worry about it. What happens with this also, I'll be showing it across. One minute. Let it load up. Usually that, that's a problem with uh, IDS. What happens is it takes a little longer time usually than general. 
general time. I mean, in the real time, it doesn't take too much of time. But however, in the this particular stage, it does take. Okay. Usually, what happens is you click on a material master or whatever it could be. It's going to show a T code pertaining to that when you open up this uh, IMG activity. Okay. Why it is not coming up? Display IMG activity. No. Yes, it's coming. See, you see the T codes over here, right? OMD3C. Okay. These are nothing but the T codes. These are nothing but the T codes. Okay. But I mean, in case if you want to know it, if you do it again, it it, it usually goes off also. It's not that okay. it will be there all the time. It goes off also. Anyways, we need not be too much concerned about it. So uh, when it comes to the backend settings, the main T code for all those things is slash and SPRO. You'll need to go to IMG. And what are the configurations that we'll be doing now is pertaining to Material Master. So SAP IMG, Logistics General, Material Master. OK? okay. SAP, SPR, SP, SAP IMG, Logistics General, Material Master. This is the one. The first thing that we are going to do now is we'll be creating it across, I mean, creating a new material type. Okay, we'll create a new material type and we'll understand the significance of it and we'll create the number ranges also and we'll link it across to the material type and see how it's going to behave. Okay, so the first thing click on material types, define attributes of material types. Okay, different attributes of material types, it came up. So you want to copy a material type. Sorry, you want to create a material type. Usually and generally what happens is we can create a new material type without copying any tables. Okay, but it's too complicated. Uh, the reason being there are many tables which will be involved in it. Need not be any, I mean, need not be just a material type, be it anything. Usually we go with copying uh, rules itself because it's already linked across to many of the tables. Okay, so I'll copy this uh, uh, material type and I'll create it across. And this is the button to uh, copy it across. One minute, I'll go back. Cop so select ROH, the material type, okay. and then click on copy. The one which is next to the new, new entry says, the one next to the new entry says copy. I'll click on copy and I'll rename it as something. Okay, so, say let's uh, rename it as ZROH. Usually, Whenever we're copying and renaming it across, or whenever we're creating a new one, it will be starting with either Z or a Y. 90% of the time, it will be either a Z or a Y. Okay? So I'll I'll select it across uh, and I'll click on. Just a minute. Anyhow, anyhow, ROH, the all the uh, following values will be same, right? Then why is the need we want to change it to Z or ROH, for example? Okay. Say for example, you have a material type that is being configured across with ROH. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're making use of this material type for certain certain kind of materials procurement. Okay. Likewise, you have certain outcomes also, right? Whenever you send a material for subcontracting, whenever you send a material for subcontracting process or something, there will be some outcome of it. Okay. You want to receive certain amount of scrap. Okay. But that's actually not a scrap which you will have to be receiving it as a scrap, okay? So how do you receive it? You can't make use of the same thing, same material type, right? No. You will need to you will need to receive such kind of materials under a different material type, okay? So at that point of time, you will have to do it, okay? No. But usually and generally what happens in uh, regular companies, nobody will make use of ROH. Why? Everybody is afraid in case if something goes wrong with ROH. Okay, so if you, most of the time, the reason being simple, in case if, the, if, if I'll create this material type, okay, I'll make some changes to it and I'll delete certain things. What happens? The standards of SAP are lost. ROH is a standard material type, right? So that is lost. In case if I need to add on each and everything, I'll need to enter all these things in the backend tables in order to get everything populated across in this particular screen. So that's the reason why usually and generally, we usually tend to go with a new material type. See, number of dependent entries copied are 179, which simply means that there was 179 entries pertaining to some other tables which are copied across. Okay, so this ZROS got created across. We will save it now. Okay, data was saved. So 
ZROS material type got created on us. Okay. What does now comes a question? Have I selected our words? No. Comes a question of ZR words. What is there inside of this ZR words? Just double click on it. Okay. What are the user departments? Whether should this allow internal orders, external orders? What kind of pricing should this be taking? And all those details will be controlled across in this particular view. Okay. Say for example, this is ZR words, right? The material type is ZR words. Now I'll go to a new material slash in mm01. Okay. I'll create a material SK654 is done 655. Okay. What's the material type? ZR words. ZR words. Okay. I click on enter. Is this available? All these views are available now. Correct, right? You can see all the views, right? right? Yes. You click yes. on enter. Click on thousand. Key in something. What is the pricing control here? Standard. ZR watch is still a raw material so I want this to be V every time do I need to be changing it across yes I am changing it now currently right I it was S so I changed it across to V so now this particular raw material or an uh, ZR voice material type I want only certain fields only to be available certain views only to be available how do I control it I don't want this classification I don't take care of MRPs on this case I don't do castings nothing like that or I don't do storage I don't do forecasting I don't have quality management warehouse sales nothing is there okay what are the views that I'm in need of accounting purchasing costing and basic data this is fine to me let's assume in this way okay I click on okay I click on save I what I did is I just clicked on save I'll go to again slash mm01 click on it still the material number is material type is it much 1656 okay with this material type external material number must not contain only number why because, because there is an issue with the number range okay there is an issue with the number because of which it is giving an error okay you not be concerned too much about it I'll show to resolve this error as well uh, is the number 1565 or 1563 1653 sorry 16 53 okay it doesn't hello I'll tell you why SK 66 it's allowing now. Why? I told you about it also. Uh -huh. Any guess? Well, no problem with that. I'll I'll show you why that error is coming, and then uh, we'll write it across. Now, for now, what is I'm keying in a material number as SK656, and the material is ZR was. I'll click on enter. You see this now? Basically, yeah. huh? purchasing accounting casting and this is one thing this which is related to either fields only okay you see this right I mean which is casting actually so what happened to the other views what we did is we re removed them all of them over here right so that's the reason it's not coming here okay if I click on if I had something and it can create a new material it came up over here which is nothing but material type directly responsible for the user department what are the user departments which is nothing but the views okay this is one such significance of material type wherein you can control the material views also okay I click on enter and the plan and I'll key in some basic unit of measure one enter PC enter what happened oh sorry enter click on enter Collection class was 3000. I'll tell you about why 3000. Again, price control, it was V, right? Yes, right? Earlier it was S, I changed it to V. 
okay if I'm going fast you can definitely see me that I can slow down a little at least okay, not a problem. Uh, I can follow. okay click on enter and save now what I was doing is in the price control tab I was changing from S to V all the time okay oh I don't want that to happen when I prepare this material I want this to be only at moving average price okay so I'll click on this moving average price and I'll click on save okay now I'll again go in and create one more material Here V directly. Okay? You need not even change it across. Or that's a wrong way to show you because I copied a material. Because this material contained V already. Okay? I'll not do that. 657. Okay? I'll key in manually all the details, not a problem. Scale up measure 001. Click on enter. Purchasing group as Brian Lurie. Purchasing value key is 1. Click on enter. See? Pricing control is V. Okay? I did not key in anything over there. Now it's already showing as V. Now I still had an option to change it across to S, right? I mean, I still had an option to change it across to S, wherein uh, uh, I can change it from S to V or V to S. It's still possible. I don't want that to happen. What I will do is I click on price control mandatory. Okay? Now see what happens. Slash and MM01 SK658. Click on enter. See, you see this now? It's grayed out. You click on back page no matter what, it's not going to follow you. Yeah. Yes, based on this particular setting. <clears throat> okay, if I make this button price control mandatory and when I have selected it as V over here, it will be only permitting me to go with value, I mean moving average price. If I click on S and again this price control is mandatory, it will be letting me to process and material, create a material only with the standard price. Okay, so what we have learned for now is we have created a material type and user departments are controlled. Likewise, there is something called as price control where control data across. Okay, just give me one minute. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so price control. When either we want that to be in a standard price or a moving average price, based on that we can control it across. So these are the three things that we have learned for now. Likewise, we have something called as external purchase orders and internal purchase orders. Okay, what does this two mean? What in case if I leave it as blank, what would it happen? Okay. Nothing is going to happen. There are some values to it and there are some reasons to it why it is required. Okay. When I key in as 2, it simply means that external purchase orders are allowed. If I make it as 0, no external purchase orders are allowed. Likewise, if you key what, in as 1... What is internal Sorry? What is internal purchase order? I'll tell you. Internal purchasing is nothing but simple. What is an internal purchasing order? Uh, Any idea? No? Plan to plan? Same plan? I mean, one plan to another plan? Yes. One plan to another plan? Within the plan and break up? Yes. That's the one. Okay? And in case if I key in as one in this category, it simply means that it's going to create, it will be uh, helping me to create a material. Okay? Uh, sorry, uh, I'll create a purchase order. However, a warning will be issued across. Okay, that's a usage of this external and internal purchase orders. And when I do the same thing, okay, in-house production and all those things, you you have heard about it, right? In-house production and all this. Yeah. yeah. Internal purchase orders allowed. Internal purchase orders allowed, but warning issued. In, no internal purchase orders allowed and all those things. Okay. Usually, what happens is we will not touch anything in this particular thing. 
Okay, we will not at all touch this. We will leave it as blank as simple as that. However, when it comes to this external purchasing orders, whenever we create a material type, when this material type is used for creation of material, or when a material is created with this particular material type, and in case if the value is 1, it means, okay, it means a material, uh, sorry, a purchase order will be created, but a warning will be issued. Press, okay, let me create one material, and I'll show you, 21N, oh, change view, display view, okay, slash and mm01, Yes. Yeah. Save it. Test. Zero. Zero. Brian Louis. One. 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 Listen. Class is three thousand. Hundred. Save. I saved this material. SK six five eight is a material name number. Okay. When you come to this, SK, you find is 1, the price is 10. No, I'll have to refresh it, sorry. I'm so sorry about it. Slash an ME21N. Because, see, what happens is when we create a material and we change something, it need not have a, re uh, I mean, in the production system, what happens, it will be definitely having an uh, impact on it directly, I mean, in a, with a frequency of about a fraction of seconds. But in this IDS, we'll have to refresh each and every session. Okay, that's a uh, thing that you should be aware about. SK658, view quantity is 1, price is 10 or 100, material group is 001, plant is 1000, that's fine. Okay. You can see in the bottom, you will get one message, mainly procured internally, please check your, this is a warning message that it is coming. Okay, however, however, I'll put it back to 2, okay. I'll save it across and I'll rip ME. Okay. Go to SK658, U point is 1, whatever, 0, 0, 1, click on enter. See, you didn't get the message. See this? Mm -hmm. okay. Last yeah. time you got a message, but now you don't get a message. It simply means that. This is also a kind of a significance for a material type. Okay, so the significance of a material type is one, the price control, the internal and external purchase orders allowed or not. These are three different uh, significances. Along with this, we have a couple of other important significances also, okay, which is the number range, and the other one is field reference. Along with that, we have something called as account determination. Okay. Account determination also plays a very, very important role in a material type. So, how will account determination play a very important picture is? I'll just show you an overview of it now. However, we will cover this in depth because this is very, very important. And if I talk about account determination now straight away, you will not, I mean, it will be bouncing uh, on your head. Okay, that's for sure. So, I'll not. So, just click on this and click on quantity and value operation. So what happens when this material type, okay, sorry, yes, material type ZROH is used. What is this? Valuation area, okay. What's our plan? In this thousand plan, whether the quantity application is happening or not, whether the value application should happen for this particular material or not, okay. And you also asked me about um, why do you need to create a material type, right? There will be certain scenarios wherein you want to take an update on particular quant materials quantity only. There are certain scenarios wherein you need to take in uh, accountability of a particular material's value only. There are certain scenarios, okay? So at, even at that point of time also, you will need to be creating a material type, okay? Yeah. So this okay. quantity operation and value operation will directly be linked to account determination, okay? So this is one very important thing, so which you should be aware about, okay? This is, uh, we, we have now, uh, about about four different significances of a particular material type. Uh, shall I continue further and finish it off or how do you want this to be? Or you feel like this is a little too much for today? Uh, I, I mean, we have, we have, yeah. yeah, no problem, no problem with that. I mean, I, I somehow felt that also. <laughs> so for tomorrow, yeah.
wait one minute I'll show you about what we have covered for now mm01 creation of a material I mean just a small recap prior to be uh, be winding it over okay mm01 is a T code used to create a material mm02 to change anything pertaining to a material mm03 to display a particular material mm04 to view all the changes that are done pertaining to a material mm06 is to flag a material for deletion mm50 is to extend a particular material for different views okay mm am to change a material type altogether mm60 is to view the list of materials block a material it's done using mm02 again it can be done at two levels one is basic data level other one is at purchasing level basic data level will block the material at a client level directly which means if the material is created for a thousand different plants all the plants no this material cannot be used across on when it's being blocked across at the purchasing level it will be blocked accordingly only to that particular plant it will be restricted across only to one particular plant the blockage will be impacting on one particular plant okay and inspection stock inspection stock posting it simply means that when a material is being procured across if this material has to undergo quality inspection you can directly set that indicator at material mass level itself okay this the, that we learnt across when it comes to the front end settings okay and now comes the back end settings what we did is we discussed on the material type and its significance however number ranges and what's the other thing I was talking about I, I missed out one thing wait let me let me go back number ranges and I was supposed to talk about yes field reference what does field reference means is you may be experiencing network connectivity difficulties how do I yeah number ranges and field reference what does this field reference mean is making a field optional or mandatory say for example you want to make one particular field optional or mandatory you will be able to do that okay that is also one of significance for a material type okay so there are totally uh, six significances out of which we have covered four only the two will be covered tomorrow okay along with this particular things how to create a purchasing group how to create a material group how to create a number range and everything will be discussed upon in tomorrow's class with this we will be done with the material master okay okay, okay. so again uh, tomorrow the same time probably uh, the reason why I was late today is again uh, my call which started at 730 it was uh, scheduled to us uh, luckily it had I mean it got closed upon at 9 o'clock uh, tomorrow also it's scheduled for two hours but I'm definitely for sure I'll be uh, joining the call at night I mean joining this uh, session at nine o'clock however in case if required I'll definitely notify uh, in the window itself saying that I might be late for about five minutes at the max not more than that for sure at the max by nine five I'll be in okay 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 no, no, no. so with this uh, when, once we are done with all these four topics we'll be done with material master and we'll touch base a little bit on vendor master 2 tomorrow okay Okay. Yeah. All right then. Thanks, Harry. Uh, have a nice sleep. We'll catch up tomorrow. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Bye. Do we have uh, Do we have Sunny? How do I wind up this call? I'm so sorry. I don't know. I'm very bad at uh, this thing. Yeah. No, no. Ian is is the organizer. You should be there. I think. Just a minute. Uh, uh, just a minute. Typing okay. Because I've got used to this links and all these things. Okay. This uh, go to meeting which is a little new to me. Yeah. So usually for all these days, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for all these days, it was more like you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Or we can directly leave this call. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do so one thing. I'll, I'll message him rather on uh, WhatsApp. Yeah. Well, Yeah, he saw the message. Have a dog with you, please. Sorry? Do you have a dog at your place? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. I messaged him and uh, I think he'll be letting me know how to do it. Okay, you just put uh, put it in the mute and if you just go and let him come and uh, once he comes... Okay, he it is that... Uh, no. Uh, Harry, he says that he will disconnect the call, so we can close and uh, proceed further. Okay, thank you. Cool, cool. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Good night. Yeah, see you, Harry. Bye, bye. Good night. Bye, good night. We'll uh, catch up again tomorrow at the same time. Sure, sure. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye, bye.